and welcome to to this uh, keynote. What I'm going to to talk about today is what are the most uh, prominent challenges in the road to access high performance and uh, what are the current solutions that we can find today in the recent works and analyze and estimate what would be the complexity of in this uh, solution. Of course, in, a third, third, uh, in this kind of, of chaos, uh, not all the solutions are, are covered, so uh, apologize me if, uh, if any a solution is, is omitted, but I will try to, to show uh, most important, right? So this is the people and the groups involved in, in this research, coming from, from mainly from the Universitat Politecnica of Valencia, the group of Jose Duato, and the University of Castilla-La Mancha, and the group of uh, high performance network architecture. Also, similar research labs are, are involved in some lines of, of this research. This is the, the outline. First of all, I'm going to to give some ideas of what we think are the most important challenges in, in, this, in this field. And after that, I will cover uh, three of, of the most important that would be the, uh, the design of network topologies, power efficiency, and, and congestion awareness. Finally, some conclusion will be, will be drawn. And if you have a, any question in the middle of, of the presentation, please, you can, you can do that. So let's start um, from the processor point of view. We um, we think that uh, there is also a challenge in, in power consumption. So uh, processor designers are, are focused mainly in, in, in reducing the, the, the power perform the power consumption of these of these devices, uh, and uh, to, to accomplish with the with the scale challenges in, in power consumption also. Uh, we think that uh, in order to uh, to deal with this uh, battle, the processor will reduce the, the peak performance, and we will need to to put uh, many many processors together. This is the main picture about the challenges from two years ago until uh, the horizon in exascale computing. We have this challenge in mind, all you know, but also this challenge in, in power consumption. And there are some data today that uh, offer some, some things to think about. If we think in the last uh, ranking of uh, Green 500, we see that the megaflows per watt are around 2,500 megaflows per watt. So, if we scale this to a one extra flow, we will have this 400 megabytes. So also, if we think about the the, f the last first position in the top 500 list, we have this this uh, this consumption. So we can show some deflection in, in the roadmap. While the goal is achieved to 20 megabytes in 2018, the usual scaling will with the, the information we have uh, during these days uh, shows that that kind of rate of, uh, of deflection. So um, we need to put more effort here. I mean, from the, uh, from the power consumption view. So uh, from uh, the network point of view, we have that uh, this uh, consumption by percent complete system with uh, the network having no load. So if we increase the load, depending on the applications, uh, we will inc increase even more this this consumption. So we can find that in the network we are to achieve and to increase the no concurrency having thousand of CPUs in the same end node, and also we are going to increase this number of end nodes up to one million. So we can see that the energy factor when to change a three 
while the network is uh, even higher. So the conclusion is that the interconnection network is, is an essential element in in the next <coughs> sorry <coughs> in the next uh, medium term computing system for the XS scale here. And we have two examples on the top five hundred having thousand and thousand of course to be so this is the current trend in a uh, number of systems in the in the top 300 list all the lists almost dominated by the two the two technologies of and gigabit ethernet which uh, have a, a portion of 82 percent of, of the number of computers and also infiniment dominates this lead with having this 45 percent of, of this of this uh, so new this uh, this uh, this picture we can see here that we are to increase the the interconnect bandwidth in the future and also the system size in our opinion mm, this uh, this slide shows some of the most important challenges and uh, note that these challenges are related to all of them. Any of these challenges is related to all of them. If we have to offer scalability, we, we need to, to design simple networks and also reliable, offering full tolerance where the cost and power consumption is important. And as we saw in the next slide, also the congestion management. But all these challenges are also related to the performance, so they must not be considered separately since they are strongly linked. We have like a, like a, a dish of spaghetti with, with these challenges. So let me now show some of these, what we consider we are, that are very important. First of all, topologies and the issues of scalability, and fault tolerance. The main objectives here are, as ever, reduce latency and offer high throughput, and also reduce the network cost and power consumption. So the design trends we have in these uh, days is to reduce the network diameter of this network, because if we reduce the network diameter, we reduce the latency and also uh, we will reduce the the, the um, probability of having contention in, in the in the network, as we saw in the next slide. Also, reduce the number of components because we will have cheap networks here. Provide efficient growth in algorithms. Uh, increase the path diversity because we are going to to hide networks and offer diversity here. Will. Uh, the performance against faults. Right? <laughs> A brief um, survey about the topologies we can find today and what are the the their drawbacks and their benefits. First of all, all of we know the direct network which offer good connectivity. Also, the the network latency is is related to to the network diameter, and we can find in this kind of network. Long, long diameter, depending on the number of hops uh, we need to go to one node to, to another destination node. And this high number of dimensions, we can have six dimensions for, depending on the topology, increase the switch and routing uh, complexity. And also the probability of, of congestion, because you can think about a congestion situation, now I will show some, some examples, but Congestion trees can be long, and if we have long paths to go to one node to another node, we can increase, uh, we will increase the probability of, of these uh, congestion trees to degrade the performance of, of, of the system. Another kind of, of topologies, which are common alternative in, in InfiniBand in Infini network, are the fat trees or, or the indirect networks in general. Fat trees is a specific case. 
which offer high effective bandwidth and uh, currently uh, there, there are several routing algorithms which are called cost effective offering um, good performance in comparison with uh, adaptive solution. These two examples, Distro and Demo K, Demo K are uh, the most uh, important example here. They are deterministic but offer the same performance of adaptive solution and they are they are very cheap. So we have here a trade-off in this in this kind of factories. If we provide high radius switches, we will need fewer number but more complex. Let's think that uh, now we are going to one million of nodes. So there is a trade-off here. And if we have uh, switches, we will need more switches, we will need more stages in the factory and probably this, this trend will increase the cost of our, our system. Another important um, point to, to keep in mind is the network diameter, which depends on the number of stages. Here we have in the hand to, to configure a reduced number of stages in order to reduce the, the network diameter. The two routing algorithms I, I described in the previous slide have this basic objective. They are tailored to a specific network topologies. And this philosophy can be applied if we change the topology. Right? So they try to balance, or they do that, in fact, balance the destinations among the different alternatives in the different paths in, in the network. And they offer the same performance of uh, previously like that adaptive routing, requiring fewer resources to be implemented. Also they solve the the out of orbit delivery in, of, of traffic flows in, into the network. And uh, they can be recalculated is on fault. So I will we I will provide several references in some slides as I described Probably not all of them are, are included, but uh, let me show some, some of them. This is an example of, of, uh, of these routing algorithms offering high performance. We have uh, a factory here having three stages. We have colored in red the upward paths and in green the downward path. Look at this switch zero and stage zero. We have here this this balance of, of paths uh, bet um, between the, the two links we have uh, available. And note that in the last stage, we have all the destinations balanced in different uh, links. So we have reduced in, in, the, in this way the probability of, of, of congestion. In the downward <coughs> path, uh, one destination is, follows one, one, only, one uh, single route. So there is no probability of congestion in, in the in the downward stages. So this this routing algorithm have been reported to be very very effective. Another example of, of topologies, the, the the hierarchical network which we have in mind, uh, the dragonfly as as a representative example. So what what tries to do this kind of topologies is to reduce. The, the diameter of, of, the, of the network in order to reduce the latency and also to reduce the, the probability of, of uh, hot spots appearing in, in, in the network. So mm, there is a problem uh, we think this topologies have, which is uh, when we are connecting these groups of, of nodes, the length of the links could be uh, very high. So in the Excess scale systems, we can find that uh, that the power consumption of, of these links could uh, could uh, menace the, the topology. Also, mm, in previous uh, meetings of this of this workshop, has been analyzed uh, the complexity of of dragonflies in comparison with the with the factories. You can you can go and, and test this and query this this comparison. I think it was last year. On in the previous uh, meeting of Lugano, there, there, there was uh, another conference. 
and also the non-minimal routing will be more complex the 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 topology and will come more complex the the situation of congestion there so at this point uh, there is a proposal which is especially designed to uh, build large scale networks we have defined uh, this topology as KNS and uh, it combines the benefits of both direct and indirect topologies. This network reduces the, the diameter as we will show next and also the number of switches and links. This network offers a high path diversity and also allows a high level of, of fault tolerance. And also several uh, studies reported that they uh, offer a lower cost than indirect networks. So we need to define uh, in this topology a new uh, routing algorithm called hybrid door using this, uh, this both uh, topologies. If you see the example, we have the node shaped like a direct network, but we don't have the links we have usually in a direct network. We have several switches which are supposed to be an indirect network, but in this point and in this figure we only have crossbar switches, right? But internally we can assume that these networks could be indirect networks having a different number of stages, for instance, uh, factories, right? But in order to simplify the, the next example, I, I include this, this picture. Also, it's important, for instance, the, the implementation in, in Infineban is, is a still a, an issue that we are, we are going to, to face in, in next, next term uh, due to some, some reasons I, I, I explained now. Let me show you an example Question. of... Sorry? Can you characterize what the, what the difficulties are in, in using Infineban? So you said it was... The issues? You mean the issues? I, I'm, going to, I'm going to describe now the, the okay. issues after this example. Um, before going that, let me, let me show an example of how this hybrid door routing algorithm uh, performs. We have two nodes, a source node and, and this destination node. And let's think about the number of hops we will need in a, in a direct network. We have one, two, three, four, five hops. And if we have a fat tree, topology uh, using these switches we will have a k if we assume a factory of two so we will need probably three stages i guess and even more so we will need probably seven hops to to reach with hybrid door we have the first hop here because we uh, go to the indirect network and the second hop here so we have two hops in this, in this case. So the network diameter is reduced and also the latency and also uh, the probability of having uh, congestive flows menacing the performance. Note that uh, this network also offers a high path diversity. You can think about other routes for sure and others route for sure to cover this, this uh, this uh, this connection. So um, let's go to the issues to to be solved. And uh, the, the first question is 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 the current technology able to implement the the router feature? Because if we come back to this, we can see that in this node we will need two links. Two links to to be connect to connect the switches. And if we increase the dimensions of the of the direct network here, we will need even more <coughs> even more ports per uh, per network interface. So this is an issue to be solved by by current software hardware, sorry, by current solutions. And other is the implementation of this a hybrid door routing, for instance, in in the in the subnet manager. And we need to analyze 
default tolerance solutions, if we uh, could be applied to these to these networks, or we will need to design new 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 solutions, and also what happened with the congestion management here. In that sense, we have recently proposed uh, some ideas which we will present in, a, in the next Europark conference to deal with congestion situations in, in these KNS networks. So regarding to, to fault tolerance in, in, in exascale, let me show you some slides uh, from Thorsten Hoffler in the, in the last in the last conference in, in Lugano, in the last APC AC conference in Lugano. And note that uh, I have said that the, the new topologies for, for exascale offer a high number of, of paths. They, they increase the, the path diversity. So, so at the first um, point, we can start to think that current techniques could be applied uh, to this uh, to these topologies at, uh, with minimal cost. So let me show you now some ideas of, uh, of power efficiency. The motivation or the main motivation for, po for power efficiency is, is the power consumption bill, right, in, in current in current HPC system, of course. N note that the, the interconnection network power consumption fraction is about 20% if we have the network empty. A current trend in designing applications is to maintain uh, the network with a reduced load. But even with a reduced load inside the network, the links consume power. The links need power. So it has been reported that this 20% is increased with an additional 20% depending on, on the application. With simple benchmark, uh, we will need an additional 20%. So it's, it is clear that we need to do something here. There are, there are two, two points of view to deal with power consumption from the hardware viewpoint and also from the software viewpoint. But this is the general idea. This is, good, this, this is the ideal trend. If we have a reduced load, the power consumption of the network should be zero. But this is the actual, the actual trend. When the load is around zero, we have the links consuming power. And they are doing nothing. So. Note that also if we have uh, some application introducing or generating hotspot inside the network, due to this application's behavior, we could have this increased fraction of power consumption in, in the network. So let me show you some uh, ideas what, uh, that shows what are doing from the software viewpoint and from the hardware solution viewpoint here. From the software solution, I, I have uh, given several ideas. Uh, the the trend is to design topology aware um, applications that uh, maintain the network load at minimum. They, this, um, this, uh, these ideas have several problems. They increase for instance, medium term topologies will increase the link speed because of this concurrency of nodes in, in the end nodes. Note that we are going to, to include so, thousands of cores per, per end node in current network and chip. So we will need uh, larger links to, to give service to this uh, high number of switches. And Mm, if we have large topologies, then the, the scheduling uh, of traffic in this in this network, I mean, um, the provision of some organization in the traffic of, of this network will be difficult. We are in nodes of, of one million, so it's important to uh, develop 
a good solution to offer low traffic in the network if we have to apply a topology, a topology aware solution. And uh, the, this principle, even at low network utilization, the idle power consumed by the link is, is quite significant. So two classical hardware solutions are the dynamic voltage scaling, which are complexity, and also introduce a, a delay overhead. This is important. I will, I will mention now what is this, uh, this overhead, in this delay introduced by, by power consumption techniques, because by power efficient techniques because it's important and also another trend here is uh, turning off the links completely which requires a fault tolerance routing algorithm and needs to offer path diversity as I mentioned but in the same way has this delay overhead this slow reaction for instance against traffic burst Let's think about we have disabled some part of the network due to some power efficiency uh, policy we have implemented and uh, suddenly we have a traffic burst. So current mechanisms are very low to reacting to this traffic burst because the, they reduce the, the effective bandwidth in the network and uh, note that this situation will increase the probability of having of having congestion, as we saw later. So mm, there are may, there are some solutions here that, as we have this aggregated links, not disable the complete channel, but only part of this channel. For instance, we can start disable disabling some uh, links of an aggregate link, and the trend is to leave one only link active from a channel. So even in this situation we will when we have one link active note that we haven't disabled completely the link. We are offering a minimal bandwidth in, in this in this link. And when only one link is in operation uh, we can adjust this bandwidth dynamically. Yes. In which layer do you think um, should this be applied? Should it be the, the openness end, or the subnet manager, or the resource scheduler, or the application itself, or is it? This is in the from the hardware viewpoint. We are applying hardware solution. I mean, I will show now that what, what I will show now a hardware solution implementing uh, uh, this this reference. You can you can have you can read it in this reference this this hardware solution from the application viewpoint. Um, I have to say that it depends on the policy. Uh, the trend is to, for instance, in factories, to use only first, second stage, having locality in, in the applications. But note that we are now going to networks, for instance, in factories, having more than two stages, probably three, four, because we, can, we plan to connect one million of, of end nodes. So it's a bit difficult to schedule the traffic from the application viewpoint, I think. This is the hardware uh, which implements this this uh, link disabling. We have two thresholds, and we have a logic here which basically enables or disables several parts of one link, right? So the situation in in exascale interconnects is to to increase the radix of, of switches, also to have this port as an aggregation of, of links. But even with these policies I have described, um, we think that we will experience a slow reaction when a traffic burst appears in the network. Let's think about one excess scale network connecting a billion of nodes and uh, we have disabled some parts of this network. What happens if the application now needs to do uh, uh, some collective operation to some part of the network and creates suddenly a, a hot spot? 
is the policy of power efficiency able to activate the links quickly or or not? This is a challenge to solve, I think. It's a, we need to to increase the power efficiency reaction speed or also apply some congestion management strategies as I'm going to, to solve it now. So mm, let me mm, let me show you now uh, a brief definition of of what well, we uh, think that that is congestion and also what are the its negative effects in this system. Let's think that we have large topologies. We think uh, uh, we have a million of n nodes. We offer path diversity. We want to. Uh, implement power efficiency. So, um, let me show you what will be the trend in our opinion. Um, congestion appears when we have persistent contention in, in some buffers that quickly will fill up and this situation will, will spread uh, throughout the network. We can find these congestion trees where the congestion can read the sources. So let's think in network with a reduced diameter. Congestion will be will reach the the sources easily in, the, in this in this scenario. The problem congestion is a problem, but in our opinion, the problem it's uh, it's not the congestion itself. It's when congestion affects other flows which are not contributing to this congestion situation. Let's think in this example. We have several switches sending a red flow of packet to destination one. You can see that this link is operating at 100%. But what happened with this yellow flow going to another different destination? First, it's shuffering what we and the literature call low, low order headline blocking, which is the whole headline blocking occurring inside. Uh, the switch where congestion arises. Header line blocking is one of the main problems of uh, derived from congestion. We, we feel or we, we think that must be kept in mind. But we also, uh, not also that due to the back pressure, this injector of the yellow flow is uh, has a 33% of, of limb bandwidth bits. So, somehow this, this source is suffering from congestion situation. So, let's think in this switch. This, in this switch, congestion doesn't appear, but congestion has influence here in this uh, blue flow addressed to other parts of the network. So, this is what uh, it is defined as high order headline blocking, which is the headline blocking occurring in, in other parts of the networks. Note that several current switch uh, architectures natively solve the, the low order headline blocking because they provide several buffers with different read ports per buffer. So, this, uh, so this uh, situation of low order headline blocking will be natively solved, but not other uh, situations that we have here in the different switches where congestion arise. So we have headline blocking, a first problem that is for congestion, and let me show you another buffer hogging. Here we can see uh, these buffers having several read ports, that is um, for instance, this read port can be connected to one output port. This read port two can be connected to a, another output port of the switch. And we have this virtual lanes um, organization in this buffer. Note that in suddenly this, this flow going, being mapped to the virtual lane two and going to the read port number two could eat all the buffer space inside this virtual lane. 
So this is a problem because note that, for instance, in, in InfiniBand solutions, we have uh, this uh, virtual lane level flow control. With we own, we are, we we know the credits available in this virtual lane in in the previous switch in a credit based flow control, but we don't know what all the read ports are. Um, are collapsed in this in this moment. So this is a problem. And also, uh, in order to add more uh, more arguments to the 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 motivation of congestion management, we see that exascale topologies include a thousand 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 of nodes, almost one million. We need scalability that will cause a simple, cost-efficient networks, and so on and so forth. We need power efficiency, which has so that react slowly. And we have this shape. We are working near of saturation in this network. So uh, congestion effect, which are noticed very quickly in comparison to other policies of power efficiency or something like that, will menace the network performance. Due to these two effects, I, I have described headline blocking and buffer hobbing, uh, congestion perform, con uh, network performance uh, will drop dramatically. <coughs> so, what is the big picture here? To summarize the, the ideas I have been given to this in this presentation, we have a growing concurrency in, in the end nodes requiring a growing link speed in the network interfaces and if we have links we have power consumption there right also the relative cost of uh, interconnection network increased due to <coughs> increasing comparison with the, with the cost of, of the processor because they are reducing their price due to due to demand so we need to do power management and to configure smaller networks, which will reduce the overall effective bandwidth of the networks. At this point, the saturation point will be reached with lower traffic load, and congestion probability uh, will rise, uh, causing a menace of performance degradation. So, congestion management, we think, is necessary in this medium-term networks. Until now, mm, the proposed solutions uh, of all the over dimension in the network of offering packet dropping are not suitable here in these low latency, high throughput uh, networks. Also, I have said that proactive strategies we try to uh, schedule the traffic in the network need to be improved because now we have this large number of, of end nodes in the network, so it's a challenge to, for the application to do that. And know that also reactive strategies which uh, detect the congestion and then notify the, the end nodes to reduce the injection rate present a slow uh, reaction. So all of them have problems that may lead to performance degradation and headline blocking effect. So we think that the real problem is not the congestion itself, but its negative effect. We can prevent headline blocking, we can prevent headline blocking, and it doesn't matter uh, the time spent to throttle the, the congestion trees in the network. The congestion tree can be reduced by applying some injection throttling policy, but during this time of throttling, we uh, uh, advise to to apply a congestion management policy devote to reduce headline blocking and buffer hogging. This is the big picture of proposed solutions. We have two blocks. There are solutions with uh, offer low order prevention, low order headline blocking, high order headline blocking prevention, prevention and uh, all of them are scalable, but 
not uh, all these techniques offer both things. On the one hand, we have we can prevent low order Hadoop blocking, and on the other hand, we can prevent, but not the not the two things at the same time. In that sense, there was a an approach called uh, Recon, which was proposed several years ago, that offers both preventions and offers scalability, but requires extra resources. So we have to, uh, we have a trade-off here, depending on the extra price we are we need to pay to solve congestion. On the, on the left hand, we have the possibility of having extremely simple techniques which uh, use the available resources to allow the best headline blocking and buffer hogging elimination possible. And we have, if we want to achieve a complete effectiveness, we need to pay, to pay an extra price. I will show that in some cases this extra price uh, probably is not too high because there are some solutions that uh, offer um, this complete efficiency with a reduced cost. On the one hand, we have this injection throttling provided by, by Infiniband and also a mapping of traffic flows to the current, to the actual number of queues or, or virtual lane, or virtual lanes, following a static mapping criterion which is established a priori. On the uh, right hand, on the right side, we have a dynamic mapping of hot flows to the available queues or virtual lanes, depending. Um, of actual situation in traffic, of the traffic uh, in the network. And we have recently proposed another solution that tries to uh, reduce even more the uh, use of additional resources. So <coughs> the first simple techniques significantly avoid headline blocking are, are tailored to specific topologies and routing algorithms. I mean, these techniques use and also uh, knows the network topology and exploits the properties of routing algorithms to eliminate as much headline blocking as possible with the available resources. This is what we denominate not non-aggressive congestion control. The same example as before, this should this is the ideal solution, having as many queues per input port as destinations we have in the switch. Note that we now increase this bandwidth of this uh, flow by separating at this point and at this point the different flows into different queues. But it's not possible to have as many queues as destination in the network is unfeasible. So, if we use the properties of, of routing algorithm, we know the properties and we uh, map following a static criterion the hot flows and all the flows to different queues, we will achieve the maximum hello volume blocking possible with available resources. This, uh, this picture shows, shows some examples. The, these proposals are, o, are called OBQA and OBDQA. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the ideal BQNet solution, which have as many queues per, per buffer as and nodes in the network. In this network, we have five stages in, in a factory of eight port switches. We have 1,024 nodes. And we saw here that with uh, uniform traffic, this network uh, these uh, techniques uh, behaves as the ideal the scenario. Also, BQ sheets is another um, technique which uses as many queues as output ports in the network, but note that if we increase the switch radix, we will need more queues per buffer here, as we saw in, in, this, 
in this in this picture. So here with four queues, we achieve the same performance as BQ Suite having 16 queues. I mean, a quarter of the resources. So even in these scenarios, we can reduce the number of resources devoted to congest to headline blocking elimination. We don't achieve a perfect uh, elimination, but uh, it's very cheap to implement this idea in, in current solutions. Some ideas of, of, the, of the complexity of adding these, these, uh, these techniques with only four queues, we achieve the same performance as the BQ suite having eight or uh, more ports. Right. So, have the commercial solution implemented these these techniques? The, the the answer is positive. We have this proposal from the colleagues of similar research laboratories, which is applied for two stage factories, and use these uh, ideas I have shown in previous slide of using several virtual lanes to map traffic flows to these different virtual lanes. They have um, run this experiment in, in the, using the real HPCC benchmark, uh, having several uh, performance improvement when using one virtual lane and using three virtual lanes. And we are now working on extending this or adapting this behavior of BFAT3, which is the name of this technique to uh, exascale factories, having more than two stages. Note, this is the, the shuffle of, uh, of, of destinations which uh, are labeled in the links that B, B, uh, B factory does. We can see here in, the, in this port what is this mapping of traffic flows to virtual lanes which is okay for two stage factories, but if we see in the third stage applying this in this this mapping, we see that the same destination is in in different virtual lanes. So if we have a hot spot in in this destination number sixteen, it will affect to all other traffic flows stored in, in the in the in the same virtual lane. This is what we saw in, in this example. If we remember the previous buffer hogging example, this flow car could eat all this virtual lane space, but if congestion arises in this, in this node, also this, uh, this traffic flow will be affected and will eat uh, the space of other different virtual lanes. So what we propose is to have different metrics to decide what is the best mapping policy in commercial solutions of traffic flows to virtual lanes. These three metrics are the virtual lane load, which <coughs> depends on the routing algorithm, and defines the number of, of leads which are mapped to a very uh, virtual lane. Also, we propose the, the balancing degree which uh, defines the average number of, of destination identifiers per, per virtual lanes in, in the network. Also depends the routing algorithm, but we also propose a, a third metric called overlapping degree, which measures the, the leads which are present in, in, in different virtual lanes. Of course, this value should be zero in order to reduce as much as possible the headline blocking and buffer hogging possibilities. There are another approach. On the one hand, I have shown this static mapping criterion, and also we have uh, uh, proposed another dynamic map, uh, mapping of hot flows to queue, which is a more theoretical approach, which we think is cost effective to be included in, in, the, in the current commercial solution. If we need uh, to have a, a, a complete efficiency in congestion management. These are the main, the main, uh, the main challenges. 
the most important is that it offers a quick reaction against congestion. If we think and a power efficiency policy in, in, in our network, probably we'll, we will be interested in having this, this quick reaction against congestion. The problem and the challenge that we also have working on is to solve this li limited number of resources for this, for this uh, techniques. In that sense, it was proposed several years ago, the RECON explicit congestion notification, which basically detects the congestion in whatever point of the network, having extra resources, content and reserve memories are necessary to keep track of congestion information and to notify the congestion to the switches involved in, in a congestion situation. Uh, RECON isolates hot packets in, in a special queues in order to eliminate, uh, to uh, prevent completely the, the headline blocking and also propagates congestion information using this content and disabled memories throughout the network in order to separate in every switch the uh, hot packet flows from the cold packet flows which are the flows not contributing to congestion situations. This is uh, another proposal, RECON was proposed for source-based uh, routing network. We have also proposed some solutions for networks using distributed routing, which is the trend. And for instance, Infiniband established this, this distributed routing. And the philosophy is the same. There are some technical aspects which uh, are different in, this, in, this, uh, in these networks, but mm, the philosophy is achieve a, a complete headline blocking elimination. This is the basic row theory architecture. We have several queues devoted to storing hot packet, uh, hot packet flows, and we have additional structures, which in this case could be ternary content and disabled memories, in order to locate the detected congestion point in whatever point of the network. For instance, this is the organization of... Uh, note that when congestion situation is detected by means of uh, a detection threshold in this queue, these packets are moved to hot packet queue, leaving a space in the green queue for packets not contributing to congestion situation. We store in this cam, in, in this uh, TCAM structure, some information of this congestion point that will be transferred uh, to to the previous one. So um, there are some technical details of of the policy of for storing hot flows in in this in this reference, and it's possible to know uh, this congestion point a priori. Uh, some brief example in order to show that from this, if we have here a congestion point in this second stage, we can address this congestion point by storing this mask information at this switch. So in this switch, we can separate hot flows from uh, cold flows. <coughs> some example of result, this technique is called uh, the RBCA, which use for hot packet queues and eliminates the and eliminates the headline blocking, having and achieving the same results of latency as for the ideal techniques that I have described, which is, that is BQNet. Also, we have obtained a real results, achieving similar conclusions, and the complexity in terms of area uh, is like one of the proposed solutions. The extra price here to pay is the complexity of, of the TCAMs that we have reported that probably could be assumed for, for, for current solutions if we need to achieve a complete efficiency in congestion management provision. So even we have improved this approach, combining this approach with the current solution which offers Infiniband. Infiniband offers uh, injection throttling mechanism which reduces 
the rate of injection of, of the congestion trees, but we have experience that this mechanism is uh, slow when the diameter of the network is, is high, so we need to, uh, of ten, to, we need to provide some quick, quicker mechanism to eliminate the headline blocking while the throttling is, is operating. It's the best of, of two worlds. We have a, a, a quick mechanism and also uh, 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 the current one, right? This work has been uh, developing in, conju in conjunction with the, with the similar research labs colleagues. And it follows the same philosophy of, of the previous one, but uh, combining it with the, with the, with the, the infinivan injection throttling mechanism. You can um, carry the details in, in the reference, but it, uh, the problems we have in, in recon-like approaches is that we have a limited number of resources. So if we have four queues for isolating hot flows, Note that if we have six congestion trees in the network, we have not uh, sufficient resources to isolate all these all these flows. So what 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 is the solution here? If we have uh, we have shown that, for instance, in this in this scenario, we have two queues. The vote for congestion control. We see in the blue in the blue series that the recon-like solution suffers because it has not sufficient resources for storing, um, for isolating the hot flows. But if we combine with the, with the injection throttling, we improve, we improve the, the, the performance behavior. And now we have even improved more this, this approach by using the, the native uh, low order headline blocking provision that are offered by many current switch architectures. So as a main conclusion of, of this of this talk, note that we are going to networks having thousand and thousand of end nodes up to one million. We will have network interfaces increasing the link speed because of this uh, concurrency of, of end nodes. And we will need to uh, offer low latency, high throughput. We will need cost effective designs for interconnection network, also reduce the power consumption fraction. And all of these challenges will cause that congestion. Situ congestion situation appears. So we need to decide if we want to pay an extra price to achieve a complete congestion management provision, or we can apply a simple solution to offer some head of line blocking elimination or congestion management provision. So that's all. Sorry for, for the delay in time. If you have questions. <laughs>